Hi there, I'm Josh, and today we are talking about the RTX 2060 in 2023 at 1440p. I was actually really surprised by these results, so let's hop into the benchmarks. The RTX 2060 released on January 9th, 2019 at a launch price of 349 US dollars. The one that I got today was 125 bucks. It has 1920 shading units, a base clock of 1365 megahertz, a boost clock of 1680 megahertz, a memory clock of 1750 megahertz, a memory size of 6 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory, supports up to DirectX 12, has a TDP of 160 watts, one DVI, one HDMI, two DisplayPort 1.4As, and one USB Type-C port, and it takes one 8-pin power connector. So the first game on our list is Modern Warfare 2. At the balanced preset at 1440p, we saw an average frame rate of 63 FPS, a 1% low of 39, and a 0.1% low of 8. Now, I targeted 60 FPS in all of my results today, so except for one notable game, which we will see, but it ran very well, and you're going to have no issues playing Modern Warfare 2 at 1440p. You may have to drop the settings a little bit to get a more consistent 60 FPS on some maps, but overall it was a really good result. Forza Motorsport at medium at 1440p, we saw an average frame rate of 81 FPS, a 1% low of 60 and a 0.1% low of 3. Now that 0.1% low came from a pit stop, so there was actually no gameplay significance to that 0.1% low, so I would just disregard it because the entire rest of the game ran very smoothly. And you're able to crank up the settings to even high if you want to at 1440p, and Forza Motorsport will look even better. And apparently this game is tricking people into thinking that it's a real race, so this game is super impressive and I really like it. So so far. Another super impressive game is Lies of P. We were able to play this at the maximum settings at 1440p, and we saw an average frame rate of 61, a 1% low of 29, and a 0.1% low of 13. Now this just barely scraped 60 FPS, so you might want to drop some settings here and there, but the fact that you're able to play at the ultimate max settings on a 2060 is absolutely insanity. But there is one game that will take any graphics card to its knees, and that is Starfield. At the low settings at 1440p, we saw an average frame rate of 36, a 1% low of 23, and a 0.1% low of 21. Now, Starfield isn't a game I'd recommend basing your entire system off of because you're going to need an RTX 4090 to run this game at 60 FPS, and even then, that's going to be a struggle. So the fact that we got 30 FPS is perfectly fine with me. And last but not least, Diablo 4 at the high settings at 1440p ran with an average frame rate of 92, a 1% low of 66, and a 0.1% low of 5. So for some reason there was a little bit of stutter when it launched, but the rest of the game ran very smoothly and we were able to run this game with no issues. You could probably crank up the settings, but I just did what Battle.net told me to uh, when it came to recommended settings and it landed at high. So no issues whatsoever. So this card really surprised me. I was floored by the performance of this thing. The fact that we were able to run games at 60 FPS at 1440p shows me that it's still punching above its class, considering the GTX 1060, the generation beforehand, struggled at 1440p even a few years ago. So I'd say, honestly, if you find a 2060 for a reasonable price or you find a good deal on it, just get it. I think if you have a 1060 or 1660 Super, you're going to see a pretty phenomenal result. But we will be doing a 1080p benchmark later this week, so subscribe for that. But I love this little card. I think it's great. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, like, subscribe, do what you usually do. And as always, buy yourself something nice.